We're talking about the Kalam cosmological argument. Whatever begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe has a cause. Specifically, we're looking at some cosmological theories that have attempted to show that the universe does not require an absolute beginning at the Big Bang. Now, so far, none of these theories have gained widespread acceptance, and the Big Bang is still by far the most popular model. This week, we're talking about vacuum fluctuation models. Now, if you haven't already, it might be a good idea to go back and watch episode 14, where we talked about virtual particles coming in and out of existence at the quantum level, because vacuum fluctuation models are in part based upon this phenomenon. Some scientists propose that in the microscopically small moments immediately after the singularity, in fact, between 10 to the negative 35th and 10 to the negative 33rd seconds afterwards, the universe underwent a period of super fast expansion called inflation. According to vacuum fluctuation theory, prior to this period of inflation, the universe just sat there, existing eternally in a steady state as a primordial vacuum. Throughout this vacuum, little energy fluctuations occur, causing mini-universes to start up all over the place, one after the other, kind of like those virtual particles coming into existence in the quantum vacuum. So what we think of as the start of our universe is really just a change in this primordial vacuum. That vacuum was always there. So why haven't scientists accepted this model? Well, the problem again boils down to what happens when you claim to have an infinite amount of time. You see, the way these models work, the probability of one of these mini-universes popping up is equal at any point in the vacuum. Keep in mind that this vacuum is allegedly existing in a steady state. It isn't expanding. You see, because if it was expanding, it would suffer from the same problems as the universe itself. Go back far enough in time, and everything would come together, pointing to a beginning of the vacuum. Now, the only way to avoid this is to keep it steady. But keeping it steady means that if we truly had an infinite amount of time to work with, eventually these mini-universes would be popping up all over this vacuum, filling every point. They'd be so close together that they'd be colliding with one another. The universes wouldn't have enough room to expand without running into another universe. Again, given an infinite amount of time, this will eventually happen to all universes in the vacuum. Now, even if they could successfully and safely merge together, the result would be one big, massive, combined universe that appears to be infinitely old, because this has allegedly been going on for an infinite amount of time. But that's not what we see in our universe. Our universe appears to be finite, not infinite. So the vacuum fluctuation model doesn't work. Next week, we'll take a look at another attempt to avoid the beginning of the universe. Until then, God bless. Hey, if you haven't joined our Patreon yet, would you mind giving it your prayerful consideration? Patreon is a way you can support the Trinity Joppa YouTube channel. We've got multiple tiers to choose from, starting as low as $2 per month. Visit www.patreon.com slash trinityjoppa for all the details. Thank you. God bless.